Now I promised at the start of the video that you would not have to listen to a certain flat earther and I am a man of my word, you won't. But the other day I was having a look at one of his videos just to find something to point and laugh at and right at the beginning I saw this. Any signs of what, Nathan? Ah, axial rotation of the Earth-based variety. Well, as we know, there are hundreds of evidences that point towards the Earth rotating, none of which you and other flat earthers seem to accept. So I thought, let's have a think of something different. And after a few minutes, I did come up with something. Neutrinos. Neutrinos are almost massless particles that flood the universe. They're coming from all over the place. And in fact, constantly, we're being bombarded with them. They're passing through my body. In fact, it's estimated that in each second, around 100 trillion pass through your thumbnail. Well, well that is fantastic, Mr. Sensible. So let's go look at some. Well, if only we could, Professor. The problem is they've got virtually no mass. They have no electric charge. So we can't use electric or magnetic forces to try and capture them. And they pass through matter incredibly easily. To us, two hands seem solid. To a neutrino, it's nothing. It's like the equivalent of a comet or a meteor just flying through the solar system. The chance of them actually striking something are virtually nil. What we've got in our favour is the fact that there are trillions and trillions and trillions of them. So that improves the odds somewhat we have to use special detectors. The detectors are actually massive tanks deep underground. The reason they're underground is that cosmic rays can't penetrate into the Earth, so this prevents any confusion as to what we're witnessing. The tanks are typically filled with chlorine. As a neutrino strikes a chlorine atom, an atom of radioactive argon is created, and that can be detected. Neutrinos come in three flavours electron, muon and tau. Now when the neutrino strikes an atom, either an electron or a positron goes flying off and hits one of the detectors in the wall of the chamber. That's great. However, if it just passes just close enough to an electron, then like two snooker balls hitting, it goes flying off and you can determine the direction that the neutron came from. That information can be built up and in this case, over a period of 500 days worth of observations, they were able to build up this image of the sun. Now remember, this is from a tank in a mine, hundreds of feet underground. The vast, vast majority of neutrinos that flood us come from the sun. As I said, there's three types, electron, muon and tau. There's an interesting effect called neutrino oscillation, where they can flip from one flavor to another. This mainly happens as they pass through the Earth. This was eventually shown to be the case by an amazing detector that was built in Japan, the Super-K or Super Kamiokande. This detector consists of 13,000 light sensors and contains 50,000 tons of water in a tank 3,300 feet underground in an old zinc mine. When a neutrino collides with an atom of the water and creates an electron, there's a blue flash. Too faint for eyes to see, but it can be picked up by the detectors. The really interesting thing with regard to flat earth is that most of this flipping takes place during the night, when the neutrinos pass through the entire earth, from the sun on the opposite side of the globe. So thanks to some amazing physics, we were able to determine that trillions and trillions and trillions of neutrinos pass through your mind, Mr. Oakley, every second. But they've not yet been able to create a detector that can detect a single logical, rational thought. Until next time, stay sensible. I want to give massive thanks to all of my supporting members and patrons. Thank you all so very much. Shut up and sit down.